Hello YouTube friends. Hi. Anna and I are back for the second in the series that we're making about uh, getting Anna started with quilting. I'm sorry if people thought after the last posting that we were going to do these quite quickly one after the other. We're going to do this about the same time as it takes to make a quilt because both of us are living busy lives as well. So these quilt, this quilt series will unfold over the course of the next few months. Yeah. That seems about right, doesn't it? Yeah, we've had quite a lot on, haven't we? We have had a lot on, and otherwise I think it would feel quite rushed. Mm. So, uh, how are you feeling after last time then? Yeah, still very excited. Raring to go. Yeah, I've been adding to the Pinterest board. Yeah, so Anna created a Pinterest board, and you'll put a link to that in the description below. Yeah. And there was just a few little things on it, weren't there? And yeah. now we've got the um, more and more things that you've been collecting. Let mm. me have a little look. Okay. There's not loads more. These ones I added from Instagram. Okay. This, the, what I'm loving about um, the way that the internet allows us to explore quilting, there's so many resources all over the internet. Mm. I'm looking at these now and I'm sensing, I'm seeing your colour. I love your colour choices and I know what colours you like. Mm. And this it doesn't surprise me at all to see them all here. Yeah. Gorgeous. They're really lovely quilts. And I see you've got some abstract ones there. Yeah. Um, well, that one's just even just like a mural, isn't it? It is a it's mural, cool. but it's, it's you like know, this is colours. where quilts come from, isn't it? Yeah. From all those tiles and murals and so on. Mm. And there's a big flying goose quilt there. Yeah, quite a lot of people in the last video said, don't do a flying goose as your first one. Ah, so, so there, was some, maybe I wouldn't do there was some comments saying, don't touch flying geese. Well, they said it's really great, but not for your first, like, proper one like okay a bit more straightforward all right well i've got my book here we'll look mm. at that in a minute um but uh you've just seen all of anna's um lovely inspiration here i really just love your color choices anna i really do oh. doesn't surprise me at all all these lovely autumnal subtle colors yeah. so that gives me a bit of an idea about when we're sourcing fabrics why where mm. we um what, where we might go for some of those. Yeah, sort of mustards and greens. Yes, and I know your colours. I know your colours. And there's some, uh, that's a beautiful quilt. Yeah, it's very nice. Do you like that quilt? Do yeah, you want to yeah. make a quilt like that? I think, I mean, I do really like that one. I'd like to make that one I day. think that's more to do with the colours that you like there. Yeah. But look back at the, the original one we looked at last time. That's the one, I think. Yeah. Now, I've got this quilt up behind us again. I just put this up this morning because I knew that we were going to be talking about um, string piecing again because I mm. think you've pretty much settled on this kind of thing, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. I, I like how, how simple it is and I like the use of colour in it. And... Interesting to see there, Anna, most of the fabrics are solids. Yeah. Yeah, and so with a few little patterns in. Yeah, that's what I think I'd like to go for. Okay, so what Anna's looking at here is a stripped piece quilt here. Um, and so we'll talk to you about how we might construct that mm. block. But before we move on to that, um, I want to just quickly have a quick look at this book here, which is the book that I would use if I, I used to teach in the real world. Mm. And every now and then I would uh, uh, do a, a, a quilting class for a, a number of people. It was yeah. really lovely. I enjoyed it very much. Mm. And it was talking about the absolute basics of quilting, which is what we're going to be talking about. Yeah. So it was talking about the quarter inch seam and the accurate cutting and so on and accurately pressing and all of the mm. things that we're going to be doing. Yeah. But I think before we move on to looking at that, I just wanted to show you um, that sometimes you might look at something like this mm. or like this and think, oh, look, that's really hard. You've been yeah. cutting out tiny little squares and like sewing them all together. I, I used to always think, that, gosh, that must take an ages. And so the curtains, yeah, maybe we'll put a picture of the curtains mm. in here. Yeah, yeah, you should. They're because so th this is um, the misconception that, that you know, mm. I'm sewing tiny, two tiny little squares together. Mm. There's some really clever tricks in quilting whereby you can sew a lot of fabric together in a way cut it up, reorganise it, and mm, then um, it will, yeah, and it, it, it is terribly clever. And when we make this block, because that's the block we're going to make, which is this mm. sort of half stripped and then solid on the other yeah. side, that's what you've settled on. When we make that, there's a very clever way of doing that where you aren't sewing little tiny strips together. Okay. You'll be able to sew width of fabric together mm -hmm. and do some clever cutting. 
Great. So it is great, isn't it? So this was the teaching book that I used. This was another one that I was really torn between mm. log cabin and um, and string this. piece. So the so this log cabin it strings again or strings or strips of of uh, uh, fabric, and the way that this is placed gives you this block. Mm. Traditionally, this would have been done one colour and another or lights and darks mm. uh, and then when you put them together you get this secondary block oh, wow and so that's what i love about this mm. you get the um you can put them in completely different ways and get quite different quilts wow. that one that's wild and that one uh the the reason why that one looks like that mm. uh, if if you can see here all the strips on this log cabin block are mm. all the same width mm -hmm. and all the strips on this one this side is the same width and these ones are narrower yeah so that when you put that together you make curves oh right so always wow. with quilting be thinking about the secondary block you're going to make mm. what's the secondary block well with that one uh, if you lay it out like the girls have got it there mm. um You'll see the impact of it from afar. Yeah, because you can't really see it from that no. image. Would it be something to do with the triangles? Would it be like a, a pa pattern in the yeah, triangles? Yeah, you might get a whole across? line travelling across. Yeah. When we get That'd some nice. blocks made, which we're going to be doing <laughs> in the fullness of time, when we get some blocks made, we'll put them onto the board mm -hmm. and we can turn them round in different ways and you'll mm -hmm. be able to see um, the different um, impact you can make just by switching a block 45 degrees. Wow. It's quite amazing how that works. Yeah. So, uh, in just to continue on with this book, um, I'm not sure how helpful this is going to be. No, it's interesting to see them though. Okay. Well, this this is then. Um, Which one of your quilts? Are, are, I've got a, a quilt that I made with half square triangles because we're looking at the half square triangles page now. It's mm. the pink one upstairs. Oh, okay. And I've got a means of making half square triangles where you make ten at a time. Mm. Uh, nine at a time. Ten at a time. <laughs> a number at a time. I think you make ten at a time. Eight. Okay. Oh, is that, I've, is that something it, else? No, it is eight. I've got, a <laughs> <laughs> I've got a method, Anna, that makes eight half square triangles at a time. Oh, right. That's good. So a little word seems we're talking about triangles, and you will be running into this because mm. your, your fabric will be cut on the bias. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's something that we want to try and avoid. So, fabric. Let's take a piece here. It's a handy piece here. Uh, the weave of it, it goes up the ways and across the ways. How mm. it's constructed, you know that. Mm. And so that means that stretching it that way is very stable. Mm. Stretching it that way is very stable. Mm. But if we stretch it across the ways, can you see how that's how that's mm. um, moving like that? Yeah. And so. To sew along the bias can lead you into all sorts of problems with trying to fit the two together. Right. So there are clever quilting ways to avoid ever sewing on the bias. And this half square triangle way is one. Right. And for the person who, or whoever the commenter was who said don't do um, flying geese because they're a nightmare, uh -huh. there's a really easy way of sewing multiples of flying geese without sewing on the bias mm. because this again is a it's a block with a triangle a bias cut to it mm. so there's a lot of interesting things to know about fabric mm. and how it behaves when you start cutting it up and sewing it together yeah it's not something i ever even thought of and i think that's um that's right, you know, you don't look at fabric and think, oh, I wonder how that's going to behave in a quilt. Mm. Or I wonder how they'll look if we put the two of them together mm. or switch them round. Yeah. So uh, don't be frightened of flying geese. <laughs> I, I would say if you want... If, well, we've, set, we've settled on our quilt pattern. Yeah. But if you wanted your second quilt to be a flying goose quilt, don't be frightened by them. They're not hard to do. Okay. And I can show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this one... As we're talking about uh, how to sew fabric so that it makes, um, like with the curtains, mm -hmm. this is a way of making a checkerboard um, look, and mm. this is called the St. Louis 16 patch. Yeah, I've seen that on, yeah. on, on um, Patreon. Patreon. We did yeah. a whole series on Patreon about mm. this one, uh, which are being reposted now, aren't they? 
Yeah. Yeah, we're reposting those at the moment. Anna's doing all of that. And this is a way of sewing strips together and cutting them up, manipulating them and making a secondary... So clever. Uh, it is clever, you know. It really is clever and not at all hard. So what else is there in here? Well, did those quilts exist before people thought to do this? I'm sure clever people, and I was going to say clever women, but I'm sure clever people came up with the idea of uh, of manipulating uh, fabric. And um, you'll get into this when you start to do this. You'll get mm. to see if you if you turn that one round or turn it upside down, mm. you get something completely different. And if you put those two back together again, mm. it's so exciting. Mm. It's a great journey you're on. It is. So that's that one. Let me just see what else there is in here because there's some other bits and pieces. This is the postage stamp block that I made my um, curtains out of, but done mm. in quite a prescriptive way. Did I ever tell you the story of why I made my curtains? No, I don't think so. Okay, well, is it in here? Let me see if I can find it. No, it must be this one. I was teaching this, I was going to be teaching this course mm. uh, a few years ago. And I thought, well, I'll make some samples so that people can see what I'm doing. So I made this one mm -hmm. and I made a few more in that postage stamp type block. Yeah. Now, there's a video all about this. And so we'll leave a link to it mm -hmm. uh, on the uh, on the end card. Yeah. Um, so I made it and I made one about three times bigger than this. I thought well, that'll be an, an interesting sample mm -hmm. for them to see how this looks. I'll just pin it up in the window <laughs> and step back and see how it looks. <laughs> And I pin it with the window great. and step back. Oh, oh. <laughs> I like the way the light shines through that. Mm. I really like how that looks. And yeah. there started the massive journey, which was acres of this quilt, of this um, block. Mm, they look so good. I like them. They faded a lot over time because yeah. they're in the south facing window. And lots of people, just to, to add this in, asked me, are they lined? And they are. Mm. Um, which has helped with the fading a little, but I don't mind them fading. Yeah, those ones look quite different too. Yeah, exactly, because of the ones, way that they? the sun has hit them so yeah. full on. It's nice. So I think then that... What's, it, what's that one? Oh, we've got some fancy things in here as well. Uh, <laughs> and this is uh, this one is... Um, I have another. I have a video about this as well. Let me just find this page. This one is about how to make this. Mm. So... Again, this is a very easy block to make when you follow the steps through. We'll mm. maybe leave that for the advanced series. Yeah. <laughs> it's not too advanced, but it's just like... A bit trickier. It's, it's not going to be a help for doing this block. Mm. So, well, it's good to have a little look through that book. It's just my scrappy notes, really. But it was great fun putting all of that together mm. and making, um, making those samples for people. Yeah. So I think the next thing we need to think about, Anna, is where we're going to get our fabric from. Mm -hmm. um, Where's a good place to get that sort of, you know, those sorts of colours and that sort of... I mean, obviously, this is an antique well, <laughs> quilt. That is a, quite a question yeah. because there are, as I think we mentioned last time, there are loads of places to get your fabric mm, from. People gave some suggestions in the comments. And oh, that. great. Can you remember any of them? Um, I wrote them down. <laughs> it was a few weeks ago now, wasn't it? There were, lots of people said um, Civil War reproduction fabrics were one to go for. Okay. Um, if we and wanted Denise that. Schmidt, somebody said, yes. didn't she? Yeah, yeah, we she looked at her, didn't we? We did. And so, let's talk a little bit about fabric. Mm -hmm. Because this now here, we're going down a massive rabbit hole here, guys. You know this. Fabric. <clears throat> it's everywhere. What we need to be aware of when we're making a quilt is that the um, weight of the of the fabrics are the same. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to make uh, something with thicker fabric, make it all with thicker fabric. Right. Doesn't mean you can't use those kinds of things. Mm. If you're going to make something with liberty, like I like to do, then use all liberty. Don't yeah. stick a piece of denim in the middle of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> because we need the pieces to wear together evenly, right. and we need them to be happy along one alongside one another. Mm. Now, in recent years, the people who uh, supply quilting supplies have really cottoned on, cottoned on <laughs> to the fact that um, we quilters really love um, different styles and different. And so there's every sort of fabric you could possibly imagine mm. from different designers. And if you wanted to go down that route of buying one person's design uh, if you excuse me one minute, I'm just going to go and get something from the drawer. Okay. 
So I've just been to the drawer over there where I've got some of my recent purchases and I've got this uh, jelly roll, which Ooh, is a, good, isn't it? Yeah, which is uh, they're two and a half inch strips width of fabric. Mm. All of them are from one designer. Look at this one, though. I brought this one because, mm. in fact, look, let's take the plastic off. We won't undo it, though. Yeah. Be what are you going to do with this one? Well, I thought that um, while you were making your quilt, I make w I might make one alongside you. Oh, you should. Yeah, that's yeah. a really good idea. And I've got one in my head that I'd quite like to make. I'm not quite sure about it yet. What, no. what pattern? Or is that going to be a surprise? A little bit of a surprise. <laughs> We'll see how that goes, because yeah. if I say, say it out loud, I'll have to do it, won't I? Yeah. <laughs> so this jelly roll is um, Ooh, all solid nice. fabrics, and I brought that one because it's kind of like your colours, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Not all of them, but some of them. Yeah, I think up to the pinks and purples. But I know that's saying that to you feels... <laughs> <laughs> but the thing about this, though, is that once we open this out and you see them all, you can mm. take out the ones that don't fit for you. Mm. So this is one way of buying fabric. There's also these um, beautiful fat quarters here as well. Mm. I, bought a, uh, I bought a fat quarter bundle of these beautiful, anim you got me into Anna Maria Horner fabric. Yeah, that was our that was wedding, wedding quilt. quilt. Yeah, so I've got these lovely fat quarters from Anna oh, Maria Horner. Those are lush. They are nice. And I bought them with na without really having an idea about what I might do, because mm. I think all you guys out there, you've all got a stash, haven't you? We all know this. And so this was going to be added to my stash, but I'm going to be using it soon and so can you. Now, buying Thank new you. fabric then is one thing that we can do. Mm. Buying pre-cuts really helps us when we get to the bit where we're having to cut out because quite a lot of this is done for you. Yeah, and the co colour matching, right? And not and knowing that's what right. goes together. And exactly. And yeah. so this one is a free spirit one, uh, a K facet thing, and it's all... Mm tones together beautifully because it's all from the same designer yeah. so this is one way of buying um fabric that must be a great job what being a fabric designer yes wouldn't it be fun yeah wouldn't it be fun mm. so didn't someone mention denise schmidt uh, oh we watched that video we did we? didn't yeah. we and i think that might be someone we investigate because collecting yeah. together your fabrics now is going to be the next thing we do before the mm. next video yeah but as well, we can also buy this stuff as yardage. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting when we're talking about quilt measurements, they're always in uh, um, imperial. They're not in metric at all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, although you do buy things by the metre, which really confuses me. Yeah. <laughs> so it's two and a half inches wide, but you buy a metre of it. I feel like everything's all so merged yeah. together now that I yeah. don't really think... I think in, in all of them, I don't... You bu you're bilingual. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but terrible at maths. We're so. both terrible at maths. We are. We really are bad at maths. <laughs> we put, hold our hands up right now. Yeah. And quilting is a lot about maths. It is. We're not going to be scared, though. No, but you, you find ways around. It's like... Because I'm a musician as well, and music, a lot of music is to do, it's to all do, to do with maths. maths. Terrible at maths. But you, you find, like, strategies, don't you? <laughs> you find <laughs> strategies. Okay then, so so buying fabric for a project is a very beguiling thing to do, mm. and I'm guilty of it. I do it all the time. Yeah. But also then acquiring fabric and to and and having a stash or a, a load of fabric lying around that might just fit together somehow. That's another lovely way of doing it. Mm. So I'm going to invite you to go through my stash of fabric. Thank you. And I have plenty of it. But then uh, we talked a little bit, didn't we, about getting fabric from other sources, mm -hmm. like a charity shop buy, if it's something you really love. Because this yeah. is quite vintagey, what you're looking at here. Yeah. I mean, my thoughts were that if we lived somewhere really cool with really good charity shops, then I would be like... <laughs> I, would be, I mean, Hexham, our nearest town, has a, lo a lot of charity shops. Eleven. Yeah, they just opened a new one in the oh, market. Oh, you're joking. Yeah. Like, more charity shops than any other kind of shop, but they're awful. You never find anything good in them. <laughs> really cheap fabric. And I don't know whether they're awful. I don't know. I, I used to volunteer bad. in the Oxfam shop years and years ago. Years ago. Mm. In f f oh, in fact, this is a story you can edit out if you like. <laughs> but Martha, my beautiful daughter Martha, when she was at school... She volunteered in the Oxfam shop, and when she left to go to university, she said to them, oh, my mum will take over my spot. <laughs> <laughs> 
And she came home and she said, oh, you, you're going to take over my spot in the, in the in the Oxfam shop. And I got a letter through the post saying, thank you for agreeing to be a volunteer at the Oxfam. OK. I guess I'm doing that then. I guess I'm doing that then. So for a little while, a couple of years, I, yeah. I, I worked there. So it was mostly sorting out the children's books, to be honest. But I would always have a rifle through the bins as I walked past them to see if there's any useful bits of fabric. Yeah. It's quite a skill using that kind of fabric. Yeah, I think that's something that I could build towards. But like... Start, start <laughs> your own stash collection. Yeah, but I think at this stage it's maybe a bit ambitious. I think maybe we need to need to go in simple and straightforward and then okay. get ambitious from there. All right, but that's really lovely to hear. And so have in mind then that if you've got a favourite shirt or, uh, mm. or you, you start seeing people's clothing in quite a different way. <laughs> you know, you, you'd be sitting having lunch with a friend and she's got a lovely dress on and you're thinking, she won't miss this bit off the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> so... I think however you collect your fabrics then uh, will determine your choices of what you go on to make. Yeah. So I think we're settled then on what we're going to do in mm -hmm. terms of pattern, where we might get our fabrics from, mm. uh, some of the basics of how maybe putting a quilt block together isn't as complicated as you think it's going to be and mm -hmm. it really isn't and we'll get into that next time because I've got a really clever mm. way for you to make those. Okay. And as well, in terms of equipment, if people are doing this and their mother-in-law hasn't got a quilt set up at, the, uh, at their house, then in terms of equipment, the absolute least you can get away with mm. for accurate cutting. I mean, of course, in the olden days, people were cutting everything out with scissors and that reflected itself in the, uh, the style of, of what you could then make mm. to get the accuracy, the ab absolute accuracy that you need to get those blocks to sit together and the whole quilt to sit together well mm. the very basics you need are a quilting mat mm. a ruler and a cutter and these often come in in a set so that you can get all three of them uh, together which is can be a good deal uh, I'm not recommending any one brand over another. We're not sponsored by anyone to do uh, to promote their brands. Uh, I use um, these three because they work well for me. I've also got, uh, and so I've got a long cutting ruler. Mm -hmm. And I'd say to have the longest one really that you can fit on your space. Yeah. The, the thing about cutting mats is they really must be stored flat and not have anything hot put on them. And if you're not, uh, if you haven't got a dedicated table like I have, then I store mine underneath the sofa. Uh, yeah, and so idea. that keeps them lovely and flat and out mm. of the way and out of sunlight. Yeah. Uh, because they will buckle with heat. These nice. are self-healing cutting mats, which means you can use these these blades on them. We'll be talking about blade mm. safety and everything. Self-healing? Self-healing, so that when you do a cut on it, uh -huh. it, it actually, I mean, up to a point... If you were to cut the same cut over and over and over again in the same place, you would damage it. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, but yeah, that's what they're called, self-healing mm. cutting mats. And you can get them in all shapes and sizes, all colours, um, everything you can possibly imagine. But, but this is the one that you use the most. I'd use the the long ruler, but then I have a shorter one as well because that's good for cutting smaller bits. In mm -hmm. fact, I've got quite a lot of cutting rulers because I've got all my mums as what well. What do you use that one for? This one, if I'm just trimming up a block and it's just a little tiny bit, there are so many rulers. Rulers is another rabbit hole we could go down. Cut, in fact, quilting equipment yeah. is a minefield. I what I would say to get started would be the basics of the biggest mat you can afford and can put on your uh, table you know, if you haven't got a table that's big enough, don't have it flopping over the end. Mm. The big, the biggest mat you can afford, uh, a, the longest ruler you, you can afford, and a, a, a cutting mat, that a cutting blade, a rotary cutter that's got a lock on it so that you can keep it safe. So if it ends up in the kid's toy box, it's not going to hurt them. Yes. It's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Agnes, you're quite safe here. <laughs> so then I think just to recap then, Looking at all your inspirations, mm -hmm. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Looking at some of the um, the ways that I've taught this. Now, I'll say right now, if you're still watching, <laughs> um, I'm no expert at this. I make the quilts I like, and I make them by looking at YouTube videos, by reading mm -hmm. books, by looking at websites, by doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. and coming up with a way to do this myself. I'm not 
putting myself out there as the absolute expert to do this. Everyone will have their own way of doing it. Yeah. And I think that uh, you'll learn the basics of how to do this and then you'll take it off in your own directions if mm. you feel like doing that. Yeah. They're great gifts for people. Mm -hmm. uh, they're really lovely. They're lovely for you to have yourself over the uh, 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 side of a sofa arm or something like that. Mm. And I think that you'll really enjoy this uh, once we get into it. But now the next thing we're going to do, you and I, mm. is research some fabrics. Okay. Yeah? That sounds fun. It is fun because we've got your quilt block now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to, next time we see you here, and it won't be, it definitely won't be, it's not a sequential series. Mm -hmm. So the next time we see you here will be in a few weeks' time where um, Anna will have got all her fabrics together and we're going to start looking at how we're going to construct this little women quilt block. Yes. Brilliant. Is that how you're feeling okay about that? I am, yeah, I'm very excited. Good. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll uh, see you next time then. And um, I'm looking forward to this uh, fabric um, journey as well, getting your fabrics together. Yeah, looking forward to hearing which one you're doing. Yes. You can tell me, won't you? I can indeed. <laughs> I can indeed. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, bye now.